Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm so excited to be here with Dr. Deborah Johnson Blake. Uh, she is truly a wise leader in so many ways. She is the CEO of The Writing Pad, a company that does writing, editing, and consulting. She is also an award winning professor at Liberty University. And she is this year's number one businesswoman of the year for the American Business Women's Association, a national organization. So I'm thrilled to have her here. Dr. DJ, tell us a little bit more about yourself. What did I miss? Because you have such a great um, collection of awards and activities. Well, thank, first of all, Dr. Donna, thank you so much for having me today. It is a pleasure uh, to be on your show, and I'm looking forward to getting my physical copy of your new book. So thank you so much. Um, a few other things that I may have under my hat are that I am a time management expert. So mm -hmm. every Tuesday, I post uh, short uh, videos about time management, any type of strategies that Mike can help um, you'd be more time efficient. And so I'm called the Time Management Diva. And people can follow me at D Johnson Blake on social media every Tuesday. But besides that, of course, um, like you, I am involved in my community, my local chamber. Um, I serve on several nonprofit boards. And I just enjoy giving back because my whole purpose in life is being a servant leader and being a resource to others. So thank you so much for having me. Oh, well, thank you. I'm honored to have you here. And I think that you um, are such a great example of wise leadership um, with your dedication to servant leadership and how much you, you do serve your community and all the different roles you play. Um, I'm definitely going to send some of my clients over to that time management because it is a chronic <laughs> struggle for so many high achievers when you're when you're juggling so much. Absolutely. And a lot of times, um, even the tips that I give, you know, many people may be aware of it, but it's nice to be reminded, you know, okay, okay I need to do X, Y, Z to be more efficient. So yes, thank you. Please send my way. <laughs> yes, I will for sure, for sure. You know what? I would love to know, Dr. DJ, where did your wise leadership journey begin? That's a good question because even as young adults um, that are trying to pave the way um, up their career, you know, I would say mine actually started even when I was a teenager, when I didn't even realize that I was a leader, you know, as I, you know, got older until my 20s, you know, I always took on leadership roles or people, you know, volunteered told me to be the leader. And so um, from that perspective, it has been all my life. But as a young woman in my career, you know, I really think my leadership journey started um, when I entered the education arena and um, was responsible for others. So not only myself, but for others. Um, so, and that was a challenge for me. And one of the challenges I think I faced was confidence. And I noticed that with some of the other wise leaders around me that women leaders anyway, specifically, is that having the confidence to do what's expected of you and to do what you know is right as a leader. So it started in my thirties, let's say late thirties. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think for a lot of high achievers, um, you know, I've heard this from some of the other women I've interviewed, you know, it starts, it starts early before you even recognize that you're in that leadership role. And Absolutely. I think what you said about confidence is really important. That is definitely something I work on with my clients, getting them to, you know, as I say in the book, claim their leadership because they yes. are leading, but they're not recognizing it. And then that piece about confidence, you know, um, a lot of a lot of women in particular, they struggle with you know, self-doubt, self-worth, uh, that imposter syndrome. 
And those are some of the obstacles I find they have to overcome in mm -hmm. order to like really embrace that that wise leader and really unleash that wise leader that's that's inside them dying to come absolutely, out. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I think um, all of those adjectives and attributes that you mentioned, sometimes they never go away. It's how we are portraying ourselves, that confidence level, because it does come in from time to time, like, am I really good enough? You know, even at this statue, oh, yeah. because you always think that there's somebody, you know, better. Now, I don't want to use the word better than you, because that's not what we're saying. Um, they may know how to portray their portray their leadership a little bit better that gets them up that ladder. But all of us, I think, um, once we realize and recognize our value, our worth as women leaders, that's when, you know, we start, hey, getting the muscle and doing what we have to do to climb that ladder and be and get the respect that we deserve. Yeah respect and i love that build that muscle yeah. <laughs> yeah. and i i do think i often use the analogy of exercise right and having to build those muscles because it's not something it's not something you do once right you don't right. go and do one push up and now no, you're that one push up at a time no man yeah. <laughs> and it's that consistency and repetition right yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and some, some weeks we need more exercise than others, depending on the challenges that are on our plate, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. What are some of the obstacles you faced in in stepping into the leadership that you're at now? I mean, you're you're at such a high level of success in your leadership. What were some of the obstacles you faced along the way? Wow. Besides the confidence and you know the confidence that was an obstacle for me because if I didn't appear confident and knowledgeable you know about my department and what's going on in my department you know of course that's a challenge when your leader approaches you but a lot of times it's getting those people who were my peers at one time and now I'm their boss or supervisor for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. So that was a challenge trying to get on the same page and understand that while we were peers at one point and our relationship was slightly different, but as your supervisor, that changes now. There are certain things um, that I can't do. And that's a challenge because in the back of my mind, I wanna be your friend but I'm gonna be respectful from the leadership standpoint since I'm not a peer on that same realm with you at this point. So it was challenging trying to get teams to understand and believe what I say and respect what I say, you know, in the beginning. But yeah. once they understand what your leadership style is um, and understand that you do wanna work uh, collaboratively for the, for the whole of the organization and to improve the department, then you know those challenges went away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think you know you're bringing up an issue too about healthy boundaries, right? And that can be tricky when you start at that peer level and then you move up because you're mm -hmm. right, like you you're not their peer anymore, and you do have to be that leader. And how do you? collaborate in that new role right 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 and it's 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 hard it was hard some days um but i think once we had um some positive results some accolades about our department and you know just other departments recognizing that hey we were here to stay under dr dj's leadership and then i respected my people and I gave them a voice. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. You can't do this alone. Everybody needs a voice. And when you collectively come together like that, people are going to look at you from a different perspective. That was once your peers. And now, yes, I see why she's in that leadership position. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I hear you talking about two of the different wise leadership principles in the book, finding your voice and lifting each other up. Right? Absolutely. And that's what servant leadership is about, isn't it? It's about, you know, the limelight is not on me. It's about how I can lift others up, how I can help them find their voice and help them maximize their own potential. Absolutely. That's what it's about. It's about helping others achieve their goals, you know, whatever that may be. And it can be something um, real small or it can be something big that's impactful. But being there um, to lift your team up and let them shine, because it's not all about me, because we know it takes more than one person to right. be a great leader. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's the difference between wise leadership and other forms of leadership, just really being able to put your ego aside and focus on building your team, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I can't wait to get my book uh, to even read more about the wise leadership concepts, all five of your, you know, strategies. I'm just excited um, again for um, ha having a different perspective on how you see it. And, you know, just thank you for doing this. And thank you for the extra items that you put along with your book, the workbook component, just to help women leaders understand this whole process of leadership and how you can be everything that you want to be. Mm, mm, well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. You're yeah, when I when I was um, creating this as a psychologist, I knew that you know you can you can read a lot of books and not change, right? <laughs> you know, we got a lot of books on our shelves, and yes. it's really about peeling that onion and working on those multiple levels. And you know what I often say is you can change your behavior, but really changing your behavior is the last step. Because if you don't have the mindset to support the new behavior, you'll just you'll just go back to what you always did. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's a paradigm shift um, that we have be, to be prepared for. And you're right; that mindset is going to get you there. Because if you do the same old things that you always did, you're going to get the same results, right? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. I'm wondering if we could talk a little bit about um, perhaps a more a more personal topic, but we all know that women are um, are still paid less than men. We know that um, only four percent of um, Fortune 500 companies CEOs are women, and we also know that um, the situation is even worse for women of color. And I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind speaking a little bit about what it's been like for you as a woman of color to step into such success and so much leadership and whether you'd like to speak to some of the unique obstacles or the unique wins that you've had. And I'm going to say more of the unique wins um, because the obstacles, um, while there have been a few, um, my wins are greater and I've had the opportunity to work for more diverse organizations. Mm. So therefore, um, those opportunities were present even for people like me. And as long as I possess those skill sets, um, or most of the skill sets, I'm gonna say all of the skill sets, because with any um, position, whether you know what, whatever level it is, nobody knows everything. Even right. if you're the CEO, you know you have leadership skills. It's obvious, but you don't know any everything because that's where the other teammates come in. So my obstacles, and I'm gonna be transparent here, were really the issues that I had and not preparing myself for that position. Because we should always be prepared because we never know when that opportunity is gonna present. And for me, I think that I didn't prepare myself for a position that I was applying for. Um, and it was the, you know, at the executive level. 
and, and you know you kind of knew who you were running against but um unfortunately what one little advice i would give to women leaders who are continuing to rise to the challenge especially want to get to the to the c-suite so to speak yeah. is first of all know everything about your industry that you can mm -hmm. okay be honest and transparent and be yourself you know don't try to be someone else be yourself but you do have to do your homework um, about your industry about your organization even small minute um, um, challenges that the organization may have so you can figure out how you're going to solve that challenge how you're going to solve that problem for the organization so when you you are vying for that position. You already got your plan out about what your suggestion and recommendation would be to solve a problem. When you're in the interview, yes, you can do it at that level because then now they're going to see that you have the fortitude, the tenacity, um, the business acumen to get the job done. And so I would say my obstacle is not preparing myself um, the best I could for that position and so i just blame myself for that i don't blame anybody else but you know what it's funny how things work out that wasn't the way that my leadership trajectory was supposed to go it went in a whole different um yeah. uh, a whole different journey so i'm happy for that at the time you're not but then when you think <laughs> back and reflect and assess you're just like you know what there was a reason why that door wasn't open and it's okay and it's okay yeah oh absolutely and sometimes we we think we know the trajectory right <laughs> and there's another plan out there for yes. us yes another plan so i just hold on and embrace enjoy the ride and try to have my toolbox full you know yeah, yeah. Um, so that I can help others and help yeah. the organization yeah, I think that's great advice, though, about preparing and having your own unique voice. I think sometimes, um, sometimes as women, we hold back our voice or, you know, we get into sort of um, the people pleasing and because we're often raised to be, you know, very polite, we don't interrupt and, you know, sometimes we don't get our, our point across and mm -hmm. And we have to do it in our own way. A lot of times we have um, male role models in leadership and we have to figure out what our voice looks like. Absolutely, absolutely. Because um, you know they're a little bit more assertive um, just by nature. Mm -hmm. However, there's a lot of us who are assertive, but we don't have to be the loudest in the room to be assertive, in my opinion. Because you know, you never know who's watching. Mm -hmm. as you, you know, climb that career ladder or open up your own business for that sense. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I think that's where emotional intelligence really plays a role too, you know, and I think that's something women are really good at. That is a strength of theirs, being really tuned in to other people, having empathy, um, being able to read the room and read other people. And that's something we can use to our advantage in leadership. Absolutely. Um, and you know, another thing that I do, I think I do pretty well is control my emotions um, publicly. I say publicly because behind the scenes, you know, some <laughs> days we're all, you know, not that sharp, but for the most part, um, recognizing what my emotions are are right then and then determining the best course of action all in seconds right in our mind we're trying to figure out okay what's the best way to handle this um but yes emotional intelligence is very very important and has helped me along the way um because you know that term never let them see you sweat never let them see you cry anything of that nature you know, that holds dear to my heart. And I, you know, I try to live that in um, the leadership roles that I've had and continue to have um, because I don't want to portray any negativity. I don't want to portray that I don't have it together. And I want to be able um, to do what I set out to do to achieve the goal, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I th think, you know, something that really shines through with you is that positive energy 
and that, um, you know, looking for the solution, looking towards the bright side. And I think that really draws people to you. People want to follow a lead like that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I'd love to hear um, more about your why, you know, why servant leadership, why teaching and, you know, running a business and being on the boards of nonprofits. What's your, what's your big why behind that? Well, my why, and this is going to sound, you know, crazy a little bit, but I remember the exact time it, it was well, not exact, but the around. It was the latter part of uh, 1999, first part of 2000, somewhere around there. I was sitting at my desk. Um, at that point, I was wrapping up my master's degree. But it just was several, um, I got several calls and texts and emails just asking me about random things. You know, they needed an answer. And I provided it. And at that moment, I think God just put it on me. He's like, you, your whole purpose in life is to serve and be a resource to others. So when that happened, and that's what, 20 years ago, when that happened, I didn't embrace it fully initially. But I still, you know, still enjoyed helping people, doing what I had to do. And then I'm going to say maybe about, hmm, 15 years, so maybe five years past, I'm still trying to be obedient. 15 years ago, I realized that I have to embrace it. This is who I am. This is my purpose on this earth. So whether I'm in a leadership position or not, this is what I'm supposed to do. So that's my why. And I realized that just by the things that happened to me in my life, other people's lives and what I can do to enhance them or to solve issues. So that's my why. And so my why takes me to serve on, you know, a couple of boards, nonprofit boards. You know, I've been in the education arena, so I've been on committees and boards there as well. But there is a but. <laughs> and like I like to tell people, we cannot do it all. So we do have to learn how to say no as a leader as well. Because if we have so much on our plate, we're not going to do anything to, you know, 95% satisfaction. I'm not going to say 100% because nothing's perfect, right? Right. So I have to learn, and I think I've done that more so in the last three years, how to say no, no matter how much I want to do it, because I know what's on my plate. Mm -hmm. And working from home as an assistant professor, as a subject matter expert, as a dissertation chair, just that alone is timely. And I enjoy helping my students achieve their educational goals. So I'm here for them. And it's funny, I got an email this morning from a young lady that I have not communicated with since 2015, five years now. Wow. She's just put a nice email in my box checking on me and thanking me for prayers and affirmations. And I was like, oh my God, that made me feel good. That, that's because I'm doing what I have to do as an educator, um, as an educator that's in leadership at the organization, even though it's at a lower level, I'm still part of that leadership, um, the, the leadership process um, right now. So that's just me giving back. And that's, that's it. So it started 20 years ago, 15 years ago, more so I was really embracing it and I continue to embrace it today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that was a really? long, a long answer. <laughs> no, <laughs> I answer I the question? <laughs> yeah, because I think, um, I, I believe we all have a purpose. I think our spiritual beliefs can really help support us in that purpose because mm -hmm. it's, it's not always easy, right? And no. diving into your why and feeling really good about it, feeling really solid in your why is what's gonna get you through the days that you're like, why do I do this? Yeah. <laughs> or like, am I really making an impact? And then yeah. you get a letter like that, right? That yes. 
Yeah. I was, ah, and then I responded and I responded and told her how much I appreciate that because sometimes as leaders, we don't really realize the impact that we can make on our team's lives, on somebody outside of our organization or internal um, until they bring it up one day. Right. Out of the blue. That's not related to anything. So that yeah. makes me feel good. That makes me um, believe that everything that I do uh, is in divine order and appropriate mm -hmm. and the things that I say to, to, to help them achieve their goals. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I want to circle back to that point that you made because it's so important about learning how to say no. Um, I think women often struggle with that. You know, again, mm -hmm. sometimes it's the politeness, sometimes it's the people pleasing. Um, and I often say to people, I, I truly believe you can have it all you just can't do it all. <laughs> right. So Absolutely. you can be very fulfilled at home and at work, but something's kind of got to give, right? So whether yes. that's, you know, the PTA or, you know, maybe you get someone to clean your house, whatever that is, it's really about prioritizing and saying, saying no to the things that are not a part of your purpose or are not fulfilling or, you know, so that you can say yes to the things that, that are a part of your purpose. Absolutely. And, you know, saying no, the word no is a complete sentence. A lot of times <laughs> um, as women leaders, we feel that we have to give an explanation all the time, right? Right. We're not accepting a task, but we don't. We do out of politeness, but we really, really don't. Right. Um, and what I realize, and we all know this, is that when you do something well and um, to excellence, for lack of a better word, people want you on their projects, right? <laughs> to help them get to wherever they need, uh, need to go. But um, a lot of times we do have to say no. Um, what I like to, I was speaking to uh, some teenage girls yesterday, and I was even telling them the impact that no can have on their lives, even as teenagers, you know, it's always a lot going on with our teenagers, and they have a lot to juggle too, including peer pressure, especially when you're trying to instill the leadership that's in them now at this age, and I was like, you don't have to say yes to everything, you don't. If it does not align, like you say, with your purpose, I say with your personal mission, if you're a business owner, if it doesn't align with your vision and your mission, you don't have to do it. Now, the things that we give back to community and otherwise, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But if it does not align with your mission or vision, no is the perfect word. Absolutely. <laughs> and again, you know, coming back to the teenagers, uh, even they are stretched too thin these days, right? They are. You know, a lot of the women leaders who come to me, that's where they're at. They're overwhelmed. They're stretched too thin. They're like, I still have so much more to contribute, but I'm, I'm not having a lot of gas left in the tank. So how do I fix this? Mm -hmm. But I think our teenagers are there too. And in some ways, COVID has helped them <laughs> pull back, right? Which All of us. <laughs> but, yes. You know, but it's, you know, they're in so many activities these days and there's so much pressure on them for the grades and the activities and the college applications. You know, I think that that is such sage advice to give them that you don't, you don't have to do it all. No, you don't. And one little activity I like to do, whether it's with teenage girls or um, women leaders or any leader, doesn't have to be just women, is when you're assessing your wheel of time, it's a whole circle with different categories in it, and, and you're trying to determine how much time I spend here, how much time I spend here, how much time I spend there. And then you come off with a, you know, a graph that you know is up and down and all that from zero to 10 um there's nothing wrong with no one's will that's what i want them to know what what you do have to determine is those tasks and things that you're working on 
Are you spending more time in an area that you don't want to be in and you need to, uh, you know, leverage that time in another area? Mm -hmm. uh, just look at it from that perspective, because what happens is in different facets of our lives as leaders, we're doing a lot of this sometimes and a little bit of this. If that's family and that's work, because I've been there, spent a whole lot of hours at work and a little time with family, right? So we have to reassess it and recharge and put more effort. If it's with family, family. If it's with exercising, whatever it is. But what I like to say is we talk about that work-life balance. I like to say work-life integration because each week, each month, each quarter, each year is different. So there's gonna be things that's going to, um, that we're gonna concentrate on that may not be relevant three months from now. And so our focus is gonna be on something else and that's okay. Because like you said, we can't do it all. So think about those top three to five things that are you know, a priority and focus on that for that quarter. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I think to your point, having that communication with your family too, like this is a really um, big, big stretch at work. Like I've got this goal and this project, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to be as available these two weeks, but afterwards we're going to celebrate together and I'm going to, you know, and so it is that, that give and take that happens, but having that good communication as well. Yeah. Communication is key, you know, at the personal and professional um, yes. level, you know, we would have our family meetings. Even when I was working on my doctorate, I couldn't do much, but a lot of times I still would take my laptop to the soccer field, even though my husband handled that, but try to be there, you know, for right. our son. So definitely understand, but communication is key. And even if you can grab some pockets of time that might be just two or three hours to spend with your loved ones, that's fine. And as you said, covert has allowed us to do that, especially in the beginning um, yeah. of the year. So, and that makes us think about what's really important. Sure does, sure does. Yeah, I definitely had some moments where I was like, this is pretty nice having us all snuggled up together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind this so much. I have to remember that when I start going stir crazy again. <laughs> It's funny. It's so funny that you said that. And so before I sat down with you today, I have a sign on my door, but it's, I can see it now because I forgot to put it on the outside of the door that says in a meeting, do not disturb, please read. Um, because I had to start doing that. But since I've been on this meeting, my husband has come to the door trying to talk to me. <laughs> and I'm like, you didn't see that, but I had my hand up like, no, no I and didn't. I said, right? and I said, oh, I forgot to put my sign on the door. <laughs> so I think I yeah. might just be chit-chatting with someone instead of doing a live interview. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I actually locked my door before we started. <laughs> That's funny. Right. That's so funny. Well, and I that's part of being a woman leader. Oh, yes. Family. Yeah. <laughs> now, especially with everyone home and mm -hmm. the kids and the hubby and <laughs> right. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. I want to yes. thank you so much, Dr. DJ, for your time. You've been so generous and I know you're a busy lady and I really want to congratulate you again on being the businesswoman of the year. That is that's just fantastic. I'm so happy for you. Thank um, you. If people want to get in touch with you, uh, how can they do that? Yes. Um, so you can get in touch with me at DebraJohnsonBlake.com is my website. You can follow me on social media at D Johnson Blake and inbox me. Um, my email address uh, is D Johnson Blake at Gmail. That's the easiest one to remember. So I put that one out there um, as well. And then, um, hey, follow me on Tuesdays for time management tips. I am a best-selling author and my book is 52 Time Management Hacks. So it's an opportunity for you to assess your time and where you um, can improve on that um, along with um, Women Everywhere Level Up and Lead. So that's another the book that I have. But thank you so, so much for allowing me to be here today. I'm very appreciative and 
I just support you in your efforts and look forward to getting my physical copy. Yes, it's leader. <laughs> <laughs> so, so excited to get it into everybody's hands and really excited at the 150 pre-orders. Um, if you haven't awesome. gotten your book yet, it is available on Amazon along with the workbook. Um, the beautiful card deck is now available and that's on my website, as well okay. as the meditation album, which has a meditation track for each chapter to help you really embody the work. Oh, that's so, awesome. Oh yeah, I'm super wow. excited about that. That was just such a pleasure to create and to get people, you know, really changing their their brains as we know about meditation now that it can change our brains. So Absolutely. You know. Oh, I'm excited um for your first book discussion and I'm hoping I can attend whenever that is. <laughs> I'm putting it out there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, so I'm going to put all of um, our information about the books and Dr. DJ in the comments. Dr. DJ, I am going to stop streaming, but I'm going to ask you to stay on for one more question. Okay, okay sure. All so right. Thank you so much thank for you. being here and thank you to our audience. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah.